What's up guys, it's Jughead here, just a down to earth guy trying to bring you some down to earth content. Welcome back to my Let's Watch Hunter x Hunter series. Today we are watching episode 43, a shocking tragedy. Tragedy indeed. We know from last episode, today the auction begins. So many people are going to die. It will be tragic. Who's gonna die? I, I predict that Beza will die because the hot one has to die. I don't know if that's going to be right during the auction. I think it will or in like a 1v1 situation will get outmatched. I'm not sure. Beza will die. I wouldn't be surprised if the, some other bodyguards die. I believe... Uh, Tochino's going to the auction as well with Beza. I don't like Tochino, and I think he might die too because he's not that powerful of a Nen user, considering how easy Corpico read him like a coloring book. So the two of them might die. Um, I don't think anybody else will be there. Obviously, just the general bidders and the normal people there are just going to get massacred. But other than that, I don't know any named characters that will die. All I know is shit is about to go down. The auction is here. Phantom Troop rolling in, showing no mercy. The leader gave them the green light, the go-ahead to just murder everybody in their way as they pillage and plunder all of that precious loot, everything that is up for auction. I don't want to talk anymore because this is where the action is starting. This is where it all comes to a head. All paths lead here to this moment. It is starting. I don't want to talk anymore. I'm shutting up. I'll see you in like three to five seconds. So, Hunter Hunter, episode 43. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Having said that, in three, two, one, let's watch, shall we? The auction tonight at 9 p.m. starts. The mummy, you are not getting that today. <laughs> Tachino, you're dead. Beza, you're dead. You ain't getting that mummy. You dying. You get you catching bullets or a crushed skull or something. I don't know yet. Squala and him will guard, so they're gonna stay alive. Anybody that's not at the auction will stay alive, obviously. But considering Beza and Tachino are going, RIP. I'm going to skip the intro. Just wanted to talk during that. So two episodes ago, we finally got the identities and the names of all 13 spiders. I just realized we're probably going to be seeing them in action. Therefore, their own abilities as well. We're going to start seeing that. So that is what I'm very eager about. Phantom troop members, some of the most powerful in the world. I want to see what their abilities are. She's still asleep. No tantrum to be had yet. But when she wakes up, who knows? People are filing in. All the underground members in the mafia. There she is. Black dress, she looking fine. I'll admire her a little longer before she dies. Head honchos. Ha honcho, I didn't never knew that honcho is a Japanese word. I always thought it was Hispanic. I don't know why. Just, I think you can under, honcho. I didn't know that was Japanese for like leader or head person. Like head honcho is a popular phrase in English. I didn't know that derived from Jap from Japanese. That's 5 head. That's 200 IQ. Damn. So the Mafia, you bid more on purpose because not only do you flex your wealth, kind of improve your standings and your status, but the Mafia overall gets a kickback for the bidding. So the more you bid, the more the Mafia gets. So you're in good standings in both regards. That's smart. Okay, that just this just reminds me of Inglorious Bastards, you know, when they're all in the movie theater and they just get uh massacred. 
Oh, shit. Phantom Troop. Franklin and Phaeton, right? Yeah, they are not bitters. They're like, prepare to die. This is lambs for the slaughter. I'm skipping the formalities. What's going on? What? Machine gun hands? Oh, the music. The music. Machine gun hands. He, uh, what would he be? Uh, what's Leorio? What's the, what's the thing called? Uh, emitter. He's an emitter, right? He's an emitter. My ambidextrous automatic weapons. Double machine gun. Double machine gun. Holy shit. Oh, it's a Chino. The, the, those are Nen bullets, though. They're going to go right through that. Oh, he's getting, oh my God. He's going to, he's dying right here. He's dying, yep. See, he's not a good Nen user. He's not smart. He thought those were regular bullets. They're cutting right through his Nen. Yep, he's bleeding. He's dead. Bye, Tachino. You're dead. He's not that smart. Yep, I knew it. He's done so. Get out! Oh! Murked in the head! He's gone. He's a goner. Beza, I'm sorry. You fine as hell, but you... You fine as hell, too. Honestly, I'll take Shizuku. Sorry, Beza. You're, you're donezo. What the fuck is that? We're going 200 miles an hour. Hey, she looking good. Beza, I'm sorry. You're dead. You're donezo. You're blunt force to the head. You're fucking done. Sexy or Velma comes out on time. I'm sorry, I need to stop. But Beza, rest in peace. You were hot. But Shizuku with the glasses, the chains, the hair, the bustiness. I'm sorry, she come out on top. That's just an ocean of blood. Massacre. Blinky. She has to be a conjurer. That has to be a conjured vacuum. That's interesting, because conjurers have more conditions. Like, that is just a regular vacuum, but its ability, I guess, is special. That's what, it, like, same way like Korpika, the chains are just chains, but they are special. I'm, I, it's hard to describe. Definitely a conjurer. Sucking up all the evidence. Nobody's going to know what happened here. Except for all the bullet holes and shit on the walls. We're the Phantom Troop. And you're dead. You should have pretended. You should have stayed dead. You would have gotten sucked up by the vacuum, by Blinky, but... What family? I don't think Phantom Troop got family. I don't think you're threatening him. He got to cap a fucking tated. God damn. Phaeton actually got to do something. Yeah, family? What's that? Yeah, they don't know family. Get the shoe. Yep, there you go. Blinky is full. I like the one little tooth. Oh. Kind of cute for as creepy as that is. Yeah, they're walking into death itself. The prophecy was true. Yeah, do not compete with others at numbers and don't walk down any stairs you didn't first ascend, right? That's the fortune. Anybody who got that fortune, yeah, do not go to the auction. Yep, everybody's gone, but you can see all the bullet holes, so they know something happened. Leave all traces. Do all the bodies get sucked up forever, or is it just like, we're going to hold them in here, and then we're just going to spit them all out? Oh, shit. The safe is... Did they steal everything? Everything got... That was quick. I forgot everything would be in the basement. Send word to every gang. 
to all Mafia families. No, you're not. Hey, York New, New York, Central Park, haha. He has to be super powerful if he can just leave five dogs behind and still take his orders. Unlike Tachino, who is not very skilled, therefore that's why he died. They're gonna just see a fucking hot air balloon. Why do they always do this? Why? Anytime it's, we we want them alive, not dead. We want them, why? Just fucking kill them. That's like your first mistake. Oh, the safe was empty? Empty, you say? The only one who knew this, everything in this, had, in this had been moved a few hours. So it had been moved. Somebody knew what was up. Yeah, they expect, yeah. The, the jig was up. Somebody knew. What are they going to say? Hizoka told them in advance. We got a traitor in the mist. Among us, we have a Judas. I don't think so, though. Hisoka's is not that stupid. Hisoka wouldn't do that. Logically, you would assume so. But one, the leader is not that naive and dumb. Yeah, and Hisoka isn't that naive and dumb. Judas sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. But how much would a trader ask from them? Yeah, what could Hisoka ask for? He don't care about money. He don't care about material things. Yeah, what would the trader gain by yeah, what would what would a trader gain? Money? Yeah, L literally what I said. They already ha he already has all that. You already have it and they don't care for that. What else doesn't add up? Let's discuss. Assuming there was a spy, Response was too tepid. They had foreknowledge that, yeah, that they would all appear the most sought-after criminals. Yeah, the, the security would have been higher. Yeah. They were sitting ducks. It's lambs for the slaughter, like shooting fish in a barrel. There's no way. Yeah. If they knew, they would have been better prepared. Hold on, I want to go back a second. Sorry talking too much chatty kathy i am i believe that someone provided information that wasn't okay 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 of course you don't get it he's the bronze he ain't the brain I thought you killed everybody. Yeah, he had a bit. He had the worst. Look. Yeah, he did not have a good time. Oh shit! The auction is run by the mafia. Okay, we're getting world building. Mafia community heads. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, ten to, okay, so there's ten, the ten dons, just like the five families here. The ten dons that run the mafia around the world. A special force, shadow beasts. Squad consists of ten dons, but so, there are ten shadow beasts. Each don has their own shadow beast. Yeah, the Shadow Beasts weren't there, so the, obviously they didn't know that the Phantom Troop were coming. I heard that a single Shadow Beast member turned up at the safe. 
金庫にその日の競売品が必死りと置いてあったらしいがその陰獣の一人が手ぶらで入ってすぐに出てきたそうだ Damn. So kind of similar to Shizuku's、uh, vacuum. Calling himself the owl. I assume Shadow Beasts, everybody's going to be named after an animal. Yeah, like a, yeah, similar to Shizuku's, yeah. Can just suck everything up, maybe? I don't know. Hold on, let me go back again because I'm annoying. Yeah, they, they, they must know that they're facing n e n users. Yeah, let loose. Put on a show. Leave the breadcrumbs. Yep, le you want to draw them out. Let's just kill them straight up. No theatrics. Leave the breadcrumbs. We want them to come to us. There's the hot air balloon. Time to let loose. I hope we see、uh, Uvogin in action. Yeah, wouldn't that be your first assumption? You know the Phantom Troop exists. All these people just died. You hold the world's biggest auction, underground auction. They're thieves. Why wouldn't you expect them to do something? k o r p i k is just meditating in the zone. They're after them. Is that the. I was gonna say that looks like that looked like Tachino's ugly ass shirt, but I'm pretty sure that's the hot air balloon. You're all so fucked. Do they understand who they're dealing with? Yep. Uvo. I wanna see Uvo. He has to be an enhancer, right? Like, just the stereotypical, like, Logan Wolverine enhancer. I'd be the last motherfucker walking up by myself up to this guy. Just crush your skull. Like, in more, like, remember the Mortal Kombat movie? Just crush his fucking skull? Shit movie, but that's what I picture here. Just. He's an enhancer. He's gonna take that bullet to the face like no problem. His aura shroud has to be so powerful. Right in the dome or what? Oh! Caught in the mouth! Smooth as hell. You're so fucking dead. God damn! You're all so fucked. Yeah, he, he's an enhancer. He's so an enhancer. To be the, yep,、yeah, kind of like a Zoro. Be the strongest of them all. Literally like a Logan, like a Wolverine. Yeah, it reminds me of X Men 2. When Wolverine just goes all out when、uh, Striker's group invades the,、uh, the school. Yeah, they're just watching. They're going to let Uvo、uh, take them all on. This is Nen versus Nen. Like, you're not going up against a Nen user like a Phantom Troop Spider with fucking guns. It has to be Nen versus Nen. Yep, he's taking that bullet to the skull, no problem. You're an idiot. You just watched everybody die. You think you're. You think you're bare at 50 cals doing anything? Ain't, ain't doing shit. Oh, he's about to whip that hoe. Oh! Be accurate! He's, he's an enhancer, yep. Yeah, 
Okay, yeah, the bazooka, it's not doing it. Yeah, super bazooka. You're comparing this guy to a tank? A tank is just a tank. Yeah, I was about to say, where's his aura? This guy's aura shroud has to be so strong. Kuropika is in that car. Let's go Kuropika versus Uvo. You know what I'm saying? Chain this guy down the hell. Yep, Kuropika's here. Let's do this. It's going to be Kuropika versus Uvo. I already know it. And we're about to see just how strong Kuropika is. Chain him down the hell. I predicted what what his chains are. It's going to be like, chain him down. Sh either... Either steal his aura away. Or suppress it. Zetsu, I think, is what it is. And um, make him just a normal human, you know? Just make him an or a normal human being. Take away his enhancer abilities. What is he? Nothing. So it's going to have to be Aura. Are we going to see some... We're going to see Phantom... Uh, wait, what was it called? Uh, Shadow Beasts? They wouldn't just bring those people up for nothing. We're going to see them. Hey, you signed up for this job. He literally said, you have to risk your life. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Shadow Beasts? What the fuck is that? For a fucking mole? Go for... Uh, uh, uh. What the fuck is that? Worm. Oh, yeah. So every Shadow Beast is going to be have an animal name. Which, like, fits them. Yeah, we're, we're for the Nostrade family. We're in the Mafia. We're a part of the Ten Dons. Oh, this guy looks cool, too. Who the fuck is that? Not like a bat? That guy's not so cool. Also not... Okay, first two guys, cool. Looks like Krillin or something. <laughs> that guy looks like a naked Martian manhunter who melted. I don't even know. Guy on the left is just weird. Shadow Beasts. Oh, it's ending? God damn. Okay, next episode. They're gonna get fucked up. They're fucked. They're gonna get fucked up and it's gonna be Kuropika and we're gonna see just how strong Kuropika is. I'm so hyped. So, let's discuss. When I say this is what I'm talking about, I mean, this is what I'm fucking talking about right here. This is the shit. This is the bee's fucking knees. This was, quite frankly, orgasmic. When you look forward to the, to, to the York New Ark, and you look forward to the clash between the Phantom Troop and literally everybody else, you want it to be served a justice and done right. And you want that energy and excitement and joy to be matched. You don't want to be let down. Um, you want your eyes to widen and your jaw to drop. And even if you read the manga and knew what to expect, to still come out of it like, wow, I did not expect that. That was better than I hoped. Um, especially if you're comparing it to the 1999 adaptation or you've never watched that and you're literally just watching what were previously still images to you in the manga 
being animated in 21st century HD modern animation technology. No tiptoeing around, no laziness, no driving under the speed limit. This episode comes out of the gates quick and with force. What, what I'm trying to say is I'm, I was so not disappointed. I, it felt, I felt full after this episode, like a perfect meal where you're, you're, not, you're not still hungry. You, could, like, you couldn't even fit in dessert. Guy comes around, oh, you want to look at a dessert, dessert menu? Nah, check please. But you're not too full with a, like a gut hanging over your lap, you know? And you, can, and you can't see your toes. You feel perfect. I feel perfect right now. That episode was perfect. The, the title of the episode was A Shocking Tragedy. And there was quite literally zero exaggeration or hyperbole in those three simple words. My girl Beza, gone. And that is the, that is the real tragedy here. Um, not a shocking one, as I sadly predicted her fate, but a tragedy nonetheless. We we lost a real hottie, and for that we must bow our heads. Okay, the shock was bearing witness to what some of the spiders are capable of, particularly Franklin, Shizuku. Uvo, this is as straightforward an episode I think we've gotten so far. So I think it's only natural this is probably going to be the most straightforward discussion I've done so far. Every single moment of this episode was totally captivating. Do I even need to discuss this episode is the real question, because by God, it practically spoke for itself. What more could I say or add to it? Remember... Remember our Whale Island mini arc not so long ago? How fondly we look back at those tranquil, tranquil, peaceful, solemn moments of friendship and personal growth. Our discussions on the existential questions like, who am I and what is the purpose in this life? What is my purpose in this life? Well, say goodbye to that, because just like Elvis, that yin shit has left the fucking building, okay? We are entering the yang, and I'm ready, I think. Last episode, our reunion episode. Three friends together having a grand old time. Today, totally absent. Gon, Killua, Leorio, nowhere to be found. Literally didn't even pop up on screen for a single frame. What we do have is the all-consuming culmination of 42 episodes we have gathered together under our belts here, 40-plus hours of in-depth discussion, waiting for and building up the vicious, heartless badassery. I remember thinking... How bad could the Phantom Troop really be? Now I know they are worse than described and as I thought. Now, answer this for me. Because I wouldn't know, you guys would. Should I expect Madhouse to censor a lot of this arc? I'm, gonna, I'm going to casually watch the 1999 version over on my Patreon just for fun, limited conversations, just want to enjoy it, and if anybody wants to come along for the ride and watch with me, hey, you know where to find me. But as of right now, I obviously can't really speak on behalf of the violence that old adaptation had, um, what the manga displayed, but we, we saw blood gushing splattering, oozing, and flowing. There was blood everywhere in auditorium of people getting massacred and ripped up to shreds. Literally, didn't I describe it as an ocean of blood on the, on the floor? Like, hell, we saw a head get cut off, a neck get broken, 
in a rock cave someone's skull in, okay? I can't help but wonder and ask, did Madhouse censor this episode at all? And if so, even after censorship, we still got this much? Or by this time, does Madhouse kind of cut the slack, cut us some slack from here on out? Like if the show maybe got a later time slot over in Japan and or kind of similar to how Harry Potter got got darker by the third, fourth book. So naturally, the movies had to take that course as well. Just kind of thinking back during the Hunter exam, remember they, they censored Hosoka cutting the guy's arms off. But here, Madhouse gave us a real treat. Like, hey, we're making it up to you. Franklin, with his ambidextrous automatic weapons, I usually sarcastically joke around and roast the absurdly long names of people's abilities, but for some reason, I think that's a badass ability name. Actually a perfect description for having machine gun hands that fire from your fingers. That's like some evil uh, inspector gadget stuff. Like imagine go-go gadget machine gun hands. That's what I pictured. It also plays into his character. Since Franklin is obviously a play on Frankenstein, he looks the part pretty much perfectly. And Machine Gun Hands almost almost plays into that like part machine, part man. Seeing Franklin in action was also very important for me storytelling-wise because of the fact he is an emitter. When we were first shown the Nen diagram, and we are told each of the six Nen classes, Emission to me appeared to be the worst, or at least the the least exciting. And I understood one cannot really call one better or worse from the other, as it all comes to, it all ultimately comes down to the user themselves, how they harness their abilities, how they play with the cards they've been dealt with, and the creativity and the conditions they put into their techniques. But still, if I had to rank them, I'd place a mission last. Like, it just doesn't, just doesn't sound that cool. My imagination doesn't immediately drift off like it does with the others. Like, Enhancer is your stereotypical, like, video game RPG tank build. Dish and damage, staying alive. Everybody plays that type of build at least once in like any video game where you get to uh, choose a skill tree and your classes. Transmuter. Bruh, you'd see me turn into a fucking avatar, okay? Aura turning into fire and water and shit. Like, take that up a notch and transmuter conjure right, ne right up next to each other. I would fucking conjure a fucking dragon friend that I can ride a fucking dragon fly around and I transmute my aura so that my dragon can literally breathe fire. Okay. That is what I would fucking do. A mission up until now I, that I've struggled to rationalize its versatility and lethality. Like my imagine doesn't, my imagination doesn't go anywhere. Like, yeah, I imagine like, I have a fucking gun as a hand and I fire bullets. That's essentially what Franklin thought of. Past that, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. On top of the fact, I don't believe we have seen one emitter this entire time before this. Like Emitters appear to be very rare, few and far between. So to get a Phantom Troop member that is an emitter and one that showcases the true badass lethal potential, my perception and opinion has obviously changed since. Ticino did not stand a chance whatsoever against Franklin. Ticino wasn't even a very good uh, skilled Nen user, not very intelligent either. I formed such a critical opinion of him when we first met him, Korapika reading right through him, Kurapika himself called him not an experienced Nen user, and along with Tachino's rather shitty technique and his overall incompetence, not to be mean, assuming Kurapika to be a manipulator, I believe he did, and he just 
read it completely wrong. So when I see him release his thankless heroes, I knew he was done. A phantom troop member like Franklin against dorky ass Ticino. Remember, this show ain't about morals or making you feel good. Uh, it ain't about that underdog shit and the little guy winning. No David versus Goliath bullshit. Ticino fucking sucks. He's a worse Nen user. So he gets fucking murdered in cold blood. That's it. Survival the fittest. You're not good enough. Goodbye. Simple as that. And I love that. Even I knew those were Nen bullets. Ticino was all like surprised. Like, those are Nen bullets? What the hell did you think they were? They're coming out of his goddamn hands. They're flying out of his fingers, you dumbass. Of course they're Nen bullets. You deserve to die for that zero IQ response. What the, what the hell did you think they were? And then Sh uh, Shizuku versus Beza. Brunette versus Redhead. Hottie versus Hottie. Waifu versus Waifu. Two girls that could ruin my life. Only one comes out on top. It, you can't even say versus. It wasn't even like a one versus one. It was... It was a totally one-sided affair. Dalzaline isn't, he isn't incompetent, though he did hire Ticino, so that says something. <laughs> but either he doesn't care and only sees his bodyguards as purely expendable and replaceable, or he made a very stupid lapse in judgment, as anyone could agree Beza should not have been anywhere near the auction and been placed on the front lines her instant lover ability is completely unsuited for any physical combat she was doomed um who else who have to oh yeah uh, seeing blinky shizuku has to be a conjurer who conjures that vacuum which okay hold up starting to get me a little confused again you're only able to conjure real things, right? Not beyond human possibility. So my first question was like, how is that a real vacuum? How is that possible? Like, no normal vacuum can suck up people, let alone is like a sentient creature vacuum. Like, I, I just might as well not even ask questions anymore because... I'm probably just dumb and overthinking everything, and I'm just annoying by this point. I guess since the vacuum is just a vacuum, a vacuum isn't beyond human possibility, but then it's like the twist is then making it sentient? I don't know. It's quite confusing. I'm trying to connect it back to the original line with Mizukin. Like, not being able to create a shield that can block anything or a sword that can cut through anything. By extension, you can't create a vacuum that can suck up anything. Therefore, Shizuku would have to most likely place conditions or limitations on the vacuum she wishes to conjure, which is why she, which is why I believe you see her speak to Blinky and tells it what to do, like, this is what you're going to suck up. You're setting conditions and limitations. Like, you saw the one person who actually wasn't dead. He survived. He was left among the dead bodies, and Shizuku Blinky sucked it all up but left him. So I expect one of those limitations is you can't suck up anything that's actually alive. And my prediction was that um, limiting or adding conditions to your Nen actually empowers it. So similar to placing like the same amount of gas in a smaller, smaller, smaller container would increase the pressure, therefore increase output. It's a very cool ability. Obviously, the Phantom Troop would value her immensely because they are thieves and murderers. To have someone who can clean up any and every trace of evidence, that's near priceless. Phaeton, I think, is easily in my top three favorite Phantom Troop members right now. I still have plenty to see in action, so it may change. 
but right now one of the most interesting very mysterious very dark very serious i love those characters the outfit goes hard and that line from him family what is that just made him one of my new favorites because of just that dark and sinister line that was like right before killing that dude that's that sentence means a lot like these people don't know family they don't know what home is that has to be partly why they are who they are and the reason why they would join something like the phantom troop like your question you have watching this episode is what would cause someone to want to be like this you know um the phantom troop maybe represents family to them that group of misfits and outcasts outcasts and odd one outs they have no family you could threaten them at threaten them with no one tied to them to use against them and the ones they know and I don't, I don't know about like caring about each other or not are their fellow spiders which i'm sure they understand when they join you're all expendable and replaceable considering the lives that they live are very dangerous i'd like to predict that a lot of these members come from somewhere like um um a meteor city We've heard the name before from Canary, and I don't believe it was just some passing comment. It was way too specific and took up way too much time in that episode to just be passing by. Like that, that's storytelling 101. When it's like you know when something's not when something's dropped in on purpose to remember. We were briefly told what Meteor City was, and I think it was enough to deduce that Meteor City is likely a breeding ground for criminals, thieves, assassins, and much of the world's underground society and members within. Meteor City itself is a forgotten place. Place forgotten, place outcast, shunned, exiled, relegated from the rest of the world, so too are the people who were born there and inhabit there. So, personally, when I hear a hard-hitting line like, family, what is that? I picture like a young Phaeton walking the streets of Meteor City. I don't know. That's the vibe I get off. Phaeton reminds me a lot of Killua too. I don't know if I'm the only one. He mirrors and demonstrates techniques reminiscent to Killua. Quick and agile, instantaneous, um, emotionless, and visceral in his assassinations slash executions. Um, like when he dashes forward to decapitate that guy, it reminded me exactly of Trick Tower when Killua dashed towards uh johannes and ripped his heart out and i hope that lends to seeing a lot of close quarters combat hand to hand or weaponry from phaeton who is obviously a professional like i said i i want to see true potential this whole thing suffice to say was a jaw-dropping sequence clearly designed to confirm all the worst suspicions and rumors about the phantom troop like sitting back as a mere simple observer the heist the scheme the whole process of it all you see is like almost rote M mechanical to them at this point habitual they operate not as most thieves you picture in your head unorganized, spastic. These are tacticians. No doubt the purpose of this episode was to essentially establish the troop as like this unyielding force and imposing presence that's very much alive and real and present, not just an idea. We have our characters like Hisoka and Gong, who have noticeably expressed how compelled, attracted, tantalized they are by the pure thrill of combat and a challenge. The Phantom Troop portray themselves polar opposite. 
to that. It really stood out to me how business as usual mass murder is for them. Like Uvo was sure having fun, but aside from him personally, it's overall routine. This is no real standout event to anybody. Nothing too especially joyous out of this occasion. Hundreds of people massacred, yet still nothing but a sense of like casual entertainment they're just engaged in. These these head honchos and mafia men dead on the ground um ain't even worth a second thought in their minds or a single remark uttered from their mouths or a moment of pretty much any emotion whatsoever. They they are cold blooded. No pun intended, their aura is chilling. So in this regard, a Vogan stands out the most. Like no no shit. What uh what he did made Franklin's contribution seem trivial almost. He showed Franklin up so bad, put him to shame. It made me completely forget uh, it even happened. And maybe that's the point. Our first three troop members don't necessarily come off as being the strongest of the gang. Like, that's just the impression that instead goes to Uvo. I don't want to call him the leader's secondhand guy, but let's just say this how I'm going to say it. If the leader was like, go sick him, boy, Uvo would go running. Like, in the two episodes we've seen our characters of the troop, you know, who 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 has spoken to the leader most and most freely, even questioning him and talking back, even like some attitude, it's been Uvo. Uvo this time around goes out of his way to call the leader. Uh, what the hell is this? No, this to call the leader with the belief that there is a traitor among them, which is probably disagreed upon. Um, after all. Judas only sold Jesus out for 30 silver pieces, is said. And I've noticed the Phantom Troop brings to surface a handful of Christian elements. You know, the reference to Jesus and his disciple Judas, the cross the leader bears on his forehead, Chizuku's necklace, the angelic cathedral esque music that plays during their screen time. So, like, Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this like the first direct explicit reference to our real world culture? I I will admit, I didn't really understand the leader's whole point of referencing Judas, that Judas couldn't have been a traitor to Jesus because like, I don't like, and then therefore a spider couldn't be a traitor to the troop. I don't know. That was kind of confusing to me. I kind of just... I kind of just accepted that I'm not going to really get it. It doesn't really matter. But Uvo is right. There is a traitor, Isoka. So the leader is both smart and naive at the same time. And Uvogin simply just isn't correct in this context. The argument is that one of them couldn't have possibly tipped off the mafia because there isn't enough security to reflect that notion, and they're none the wiser. Am I correct in that the mafia were indeed tipped off? And to me, I'm like, it, it's through Neon's fortunes, right? Like, of course, how could the Phantom Troop know that a girl out there exists with the specialist ability that tells people's fortunes. That's why the safes were emptied by Owl. Like, the Mafia emptied it themselves, deploying one of their shadow beasts because of the fortunes the head honchos were told. I don't know. Clearly, Owl has some sort of ability akin to, like, Hermione's enchanted handbag, if you remember from Harry Potter, just like the bottomless bags. Um, she the bottomless bag she could just endlessly put a number of things in, and like she was whipping a whole, she whipped the whole tent and shit out of that bitch. Um, he definitely has to be a conjurer. He has to conjure something. I just don't know what he could use to casually walk out of that safe with hands in pockets and everything is in tow like um oh oh yeah uh, i forgot i had a semi i want to diverge back quickly i had a 
Um, semi big observation I wanted to include when I was talking about the Phantom Troop leader and uh, religious imagery. I forgot. There is a hell of a lot of focus on that goddamn book. The leader seems to constantly keep his keep in his hands. Frequently seen reading it in his free time. It practically represents the Bible himself to go along with the whole Christian imagery vibes that are present here, like a fundamentalist Christian where the words of the Bible are like fact and interpreted literally in like he is fixated on that book and whatever is in it is crucially tied to him and important to him. Just from a storytelling perspective, a writing, directing, animating standpoint, they literally cut to the book and show it a number of times where it's like thrown in your face like, hey, pay attention to this book because it's going to be important later. Like, it's like so obvious. It's like a kid with a stuffed animal. The two are inseparable right now. And I don't know what's on those pages yet. I can't see the pages. I'm eager to find out. But let's round out this discussion here. Like I said, it's going to be the most straightforward discussion we've had. Just briefly talking about the ending. Uvo, he's got me hyped. He is literally Logan, Wolverine. The adamantium claws have come out. He catches a bullet between his teeth. Uh, takes a sniper round to the dome. Uh, and blocks a super bazooka like someone blew a paper straw wrapper at him. Mm. He has to be an enhancer, right? Just like with Franklin, how pleased am I to see an emitter's close to full potential? If he is one, I'm pleased to also see an enhancer's true potential, who Gon can not only become, but surpass. We never saw Wing truly in action, and the opponents Killua and Gon faced in Heaven's Arena they didn't really do any justice to any of the Ned classes. So the Phantom Troop are serving us uh, to that. The only question I have and can't wait to be answered now is Phantom Troop versus Shadow Beasts. Will the latter survive? Do they stand a chance? We've met five of the ten Shadow Beasts. Owl, we, went, we met earlier in the episode. Four more arrive on location to take on Uvogan. Worm, Leech, Rabid Dog, and Porcupine. Fitting names for their group. I just do not see these people surviving against Uvogan. From a pure storytelling perspective, they have to die. One, to justify how truly threatening the troop are. And secondly... To show Korpika out in the distance watching, you know he's not just going to be standing there from afar staring at people who murdered his clan and doing nothing, okay? Gon got his characterization by returning the badge. Killua will get his characterization at some point inv involving and confronting his brother Alumi or something. Korpika must achieve a character evolution by directly challenging the Phantom Troop arguably the strongest member to prove his own dominance, in turn challenging the notion that a conjurer would struggle to beat an enhancer. Remember, Mizukin said all this. A conjurer would have a hard time beating an enhancer straight up, and that his conjuring choice is flawed. Effectively, he wants to prove both of those points wrong. And for Korpika to jump in the ring, the Shadow Beasts have to die. If I had to put money down, I'm betting Uvogan manhandles these guys. And is this the first episode where Gon doesn't even make one single appearance? I can't remember. That like that speaks volumes to how focused and top priority this part of the arc specifically is right here to the overall story. This is what we're focusing on. Our characters are living their own lives in the outside of us. We're we're off, um, omnipotent uh, bird's eye view narrator third party viewing. We're only looking at this. Very curious to see how Gon and Killua are going to be dragged and introduced into this whole thing. You know, I, I don't see them abandoning their main priority, Greed Island, 
um, for the battle with the troops. So it's going to happen at some later stage. So I predict a lot of cuts back and forth between our characters and what's going on. Lastly is Hisoka. What card is he going to pull out of his ass sooner or later to get the ball rolling to his ultimate self-serving agenda? I just feel like I got to strap myself in, seat buckle is on, keep all arms and legs inside the ride at all times is how I'm feeling right now. But that is a perfect spot to end today's discussion. That's all I have. If you enjoyed the video, hitting that like button and let me know actually does go a long, long way. And if you haven't already, subscribing to stay in the loop really means a whole lot to me and helps this channel grow. Keep the conversation going in the comments below so I can connect with you even more. And remember, Jughead's Journey members get early access and exclusive content over on my Patreon. Having said all that, and with that said, so long, farewell, until next time, thank you, stay happy, and I hope you have a good one. Peace. <laughs>